Shahid Naika. In your opinion, who is the greatest wrestler to never win a major world championship? And where does Mr. Perfect rank on this list? Wasn't he AWA world champion, Mr. Perfect? Or Kurt Hennig? Well, I was going to say Mr. Perfect, but since he named him, but he, he was right up there. I mean, Kurt Henning, uh, he left us way too soon. But he was a great, great talent. Great guy. I mean, he could he could actually, this is a guy who could fit not only in a wrestling circle, but any type of other circle too. Bankers. He, would, he could fit in because he was a good looking guy and he talked well, dressed well. But probably I would have to agree that he was probably the top one. And they've, they've been others that have given the chance. I've seen a lot of guys that have given the chance because sometimes I, I use uh, Roman Reigns for this. It took the WWE a year and a half or maybe more to really get him over. Now, if they'd have taken that amount of time with somebody else, yeah, they'd probably get over too. But it's how much that creative wants to get behind you and wants to push you. I say, I think Dolph Ziegler's name comes in there. Dolph Ziegler was, I think he was a great worker. And if they'd have got behind him and I, I think adjusted his selling style just a little bit, I think he oversold. I think if you ever watched him, I mean, you, you, you hit him with one punch, but he'd sell it like you shot him with a shotgun. But toward the end of the match, you hit him with the same punch. He'd sell it the same way. Instead of being stronger at the start of the match and being a little bit weaker at the end, which is normal, I think he, he kind of bought it all into one. But he was a, he was a great talent. With um, Kurt Hennig, uh, you were in the WWF at the same time as him in the mid-90s. Did you spend any time with him? Because he wasn't wrestling at the time. He was just the commentator. I was with him in Puerto Rico when he came down. Really? And Yeah, we brought him down. And uh, there's a story about him. I don't know if I've told it here or not. But he was supposed to do, he was banned from Puerto Rico. And he couldn't be there. He was like, done something. This is before I got there. He came in later when I was there, but he was going to come up into out from under the ring uh, in Puerto Rico. But they don't have the they don't have the uh, ability to dim their lights and come back on. Oh, they can dim lights, but it takes them twenty minutes to come back on. So <laughs> that's, that's too long a time. They've got a light. They back put up. <laughs> They put him. They put him up under a ring because. Kurt is uh, the world's one of the world's wrestling's biggest rivers. So he got up under the ring early, like five o'clock in the afternoon, and only the ring crews are maybe six. But he wasn't going to come out from under that ring to about ten thirty. So he's going to have to spend a lot of time under that ring because they put him water there and maybe a sandwich in case he got. He got hungry. So he's under there and he heard all the banging around. It's dark down there. And he had to go to the bathroom. So you know where this is going, right? So he can't, he can't get out and go to the bathroom. Nobody's supposed to know he's there. So he went over in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and he did him a little doo-doo drop. And he left it there. And then he got up and he did the run in and the match. He got out and he went to the back and got his stuff or whatever. And he left. So the ring crew that night teared it down <laughs> <laughs> and they run across the little offering that he left. And he thought that was so funny. And they was all bitching to, to Carlos about why'd he do that? Why'd he do this? And, but Carlos went, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's Kurt, I guess, but they had to deal with the aftermath. <laughs> did um did you spend any time with Kurt Hennig during his very brief TNA run? I think this was around two thousand three. Well, a little bit, but not much, because see, 
the talent went to work about three o'clock. We went to work about 10 o'clock in the morning. And we didn't get off to I go back to the hotel at about 12. So that's a long day. That's a 12 to 14 hour day. So the only time I would I would have spent the only place I would could have spent time around him was in the bar. I didn't much go on like I don't like going to bars that much anyway. I go in there just to say hello and check in, but I didn't I didn't go in there. So I didn't really spend a lot of time around him. But I heard a lot of stories about him though. 